choice. Some movie characters embed themselves in the fabric of American folklore very quietly. Often, it's not until we look back to see their full impact that we truly reckon with how long-lasting they'd become. In the case of Saw's Jigsaw, the engineer of pain and morality has left a trail of carnage that will spread 10 movies when Saw 10 is released this fall. But how did a corpse on the ground rise to become such a legacy villain? The newspapers started calling him the Jigsaw Killer. Actually, he never killed anyone. He finds ways for his victims to kill themselves. Before we get too far, be warned, there will be spoilers ahead. But if that's not your bag, feel free to subscribe and browse our other videos. Making his debut in 2004's Saw, the character of Jigsaw was the brainchild of director James Wan and writer Lee Whannell. The story centered on two men who awaken in a room, injured and chained to opposite walls. Between them is what they think is the corpse of another victim. Throughout the movie's runtime, the two try to figure out why they are here, only to discover it was all part of a test constructed by their captor, who was laying between them the entire time. The antagonist, referred to as the Jigsaw Killer because of the puzzle pieces he mutilated from his victim's bodies, was played by veteran actor Tobin Bell. But Jigsaw was never an agent of chaos or evil in line with the shape from Halloween. For all of Jigsaw's attacks, there was a sense of morality behind them, and that may be one of his most terrifying attributes. In the case of our two men chained to the wall, one is an adulterer with a cold bedside manner, and the other being a morally gray photographer. These are attributes that Jigsaw has deemed as reprehensible. I call you unworthy of the body you possess, of the life that you've been given. The idea that Jigsaw has no qualms about human death in service of his own moral code separates him from humanity. That separation instills both fear and a weird sort of admiration that has led to his longevity. The horror arises when we're left to wonder, who is this person to tell the world what is right? Throughout the Saw franchise, we learn that Jigsaw is actually John Kramer. In a flashback during the first film, we see him diagnosed with a frontal lobe tumor that turned into colon cancer. Yes, I'm sick, officer. Sick from the disease eating away at me inside. I'm sick of it all. Already, the first film is setting up that this was a man at the end of his rope. So much so, he attempts to end his life. When that fails, he's rejuvenated with a sense of purpose, to cherish every moment of life. In Jigsaw's warped mind, he's attempting to give a gift to the world, a second chance and better understanding of the beauty life can hold. If only they would get over their misgivings and live exactly the way Jigsaw wants them to live. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore. It's here the context of Jigsaw's games were all perpetrated with the idea of what would you do if you only had so long left to live. In Jigsaw's twisted mind, he believes he is helping them, which is why, when they fail, he mutilates their bodies and removes a puzzle-shaped piece of flesh. He believes the victims that fail his tests are missing a part of them that makes them human, their survival instinct. It's, again, asking people to measure up to his standards like a new stepdad intent on making you respect him. Don't cry. I've given your life a purpose. There are obviously plenty of reasons this is wrong, but one of the most terrifying aspects is how we as an audience respond. There is a vast swath of folk who believe and say to themselves, I could pass that test. For the last almost 20 years, Jigsaw has been showing the audience what happens when people try to impose their beliefs on others. The horrific aftermath that can occur when an agreement isn't reached. In the case of character Amanda Young, we see what happens when people are radicalized. Originally appearing in the first Saw as the sole survivor of Jigsaw. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. She appeared again in Saw 2. Throughout the movie, we're led to believe she's filling the role of the final girl trope until we learn she's been working with Jigsaw as an apprentice. It is I who will carry on John's work after he dies, and you Daniel! are my first test subject. After surviving Jigsaw's game, Young bought into the madman's propaganda and believes she got clean due to his help. I found myself a father, a teacher. You must meet death. <laughs> in order to be reborn. Young's character transformed from a terrified victim to a faithful follower. 
So much so that when we meet her again in Saw 3, the trap she has been making for Jigsaw become inescapable. This is a slight turn in tone for a series that has been painting Jigsaw as a manipulative madman. It's here the creative team begins to portray the killer in a softer light. For all of the pain and trauma he inflicts, the traps he has been utilizing were at least escapable. Jigsaw seems to pride himself in making traps that are either literal or symbolic of what he sees as his victim's shortcomings. A physical object that can conquer in their quest to a better understanding of what he considers a good life. The idea that Jigsaw is giving his victims any sort of choice is more for his own justification. It's an impossible task he set upon himself in order to give his life purpose, which makes sense given his history of both physical and mental illness. People want meaning in their life, even if it's misguided and cruel by any rational metric. Salvation can be yours if you cleanse yourselves of the habitual lies which have brought you here. Confess, the truth will set you free. After the third movie and Jigsaw's death, Tobin has still appeared in every following movie via flashback. We learn in Saw 4 that Jigsaw was a successful engineer who was sent into a deep depression after his unborn child's passing. He spiraled out and became so angry, his wife left him and in his depression, survived an attempt on his own life. That survival is what triggered his rampage and he began his first game on the cause of his infant's passing. But that game was never going to end well. This was an unstable, grieving man who has just captured the person he believes as the catalyst of his downfall. It's an example of the lie he tells himself. This idea that he is a wronged man doing good in the world. The trauma he has endured personifies itself as what the creators lovingly call Billy the Puppet. Originally made by Jigsaw as a toy for his unborn child, he rebuilds the puppet with deformed features and hand-scrawled spirals. With this item, he communicates with his victims. I want to play a game for the most flesh in order to save their life. The choice is yours. It's a perfect showcase of Jigsaw's cowardice. While he may talk ad nauseum about his tests and proper ways to live a life, he chooses to hide behind a puppet, cassettes, and video screens. That lie is at the center of what has made Jigsaw endure for decades. When Saw 10 is released, Jigsaw will have been in more movies than Ghostface, Freddy Krueger, or Xenomorphs. People enjoy watching Jigsaw because they want to see a vigilante enact their sense of justice. They want to believe they are the best versions of themselves capable of triumphing over any tests against their sense of survival. Above all, People want to believe in themselves, and Jigsaw is a dark shadow that challenges them. While the Saw movies have ventured from the small grassroots film with the original creators no longer directly involved, their idea remains true. A ruthless and terrifying madman who simply demands be better at all costs. Game over. So what do you think? Who are some other vigilantes who force their ideals upon the audience? Let us know down in the comments below, and as always, Thank you for watching.